that was a small part of Studies for a Portrait for Electric Guitar by Clemens Gartenstätte, played by Jaron Deutsch. The YouTube link to the video, um, to the whole piece, is given under this video. So if you would like to listen to the whole piece, you can find the link here under this video. Born in 1966, Clemens Gartenstätte studied in Vienna and then Stuttgart with Helmut Lachemann. He teaches music theory, music analysis, and composition at the University of Music in Graz. His works have been commissioned by the Donaueschingen Festival, Musik der Jahrhunderte Stuttgart, WDR or Witten Days for New Chamber Music, Wien Modern, OAF RSO or the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra, Musik Biennale Berlin, Salzburger Festspiele, Musik Biennale Salzburg, Steirische Herbst, Ultima Oslo, and more. I sat down with this fascinating composer to talk about his music and compositional philosophy. Clemens Gartenstätte, thank you for being here. According to you, your compositional style is a sort of resynthesis of perception, sensation, and feeling. What do you exactly mean by that? Uh, well, um, my thesis, or I'm, I'm assuming, or I'm quite sure, that when we perceive Uh, we project a single, let's say, perception, an, all, an acoustic perception on all our senses in order to understand. So we need our full embodiment of uh, our senses to understand a single perception. If we hear a sound, we uh, project this sound into the altitude. So in our spatial relationship, we say it's high or it's low. Yeah? We also project it on our... Um, on, on various metaphors that we use, for example, gustatives, it's sharp, yeah? or a sound is spicy, or a sound is rough, so uh, according to our skin uh, perception. And we do this in order to understand any perception that we have. We also, I think, we do this with, um, um, audio, uh, with uh, visual uh, perceptions, but I'm concentrated on uh, acoustic uh, perceptions. Uh, we do this in order to understand this event that um, and to embody it to us, to make it to ours. Yeah? And what I do um, in composing, that I turn this um, way of looking at perception um, uh, the other way around, so that I'm starting with my composition exactly uh, at this uh, moment where we project something onto Yeah? So I find, for example, a sound which is sharp according to an instrument or to it also the idiomatics of an instrument, etc., etc. Yeah? So all my, and, um, all my work is based on this fundamental uh, knowledge about perception. And of course, also perception is not something which is given to us like a biological, um, let's say, uh, term that we simply have but we learn it so uh, all what we also see that our remembrance that our <clears throat> bringing up that the culture we live in is uh, also written into our body as a kind of grounding surface on which any uh, perception of uh, ours is possible and also and this is my this is why I think we made art by um, our art we can overcome and we can transcend these uh, let's say uh, constraints and borders to somewhere else yeah? and that's, that's just you know what I think uh, why we humans made art yeah? because that's the way how we can broaden our um, uh, restrictions and see them as possibilities yeah? and with any artwork Maybe the possibilities of what we say art is, is a little, you know, is a, the boundaries are a little uh, widened then. So that's the fundamentals, maybe. So um, would you say when you're composing, you're creating a certain acoustical experience for, for, uh, for the audience? Or do you specifically, um, like, reckon that I'm doing something, for example, spicy, And I assume that this will be perceived as something spicy for the audience. Or is it mostly from your own pers 
perspective? I think it's both, you know. Uh, the first is that I'm not, uh, because it's very easy to make a spicy sound. Yeah, it's just, uh, that's, that's not the problem. But um, <clears throat> thus uh, our uh, perception is also based on relations and on specific, uh, let's say, um, terms of relations, yeah we can see that there are some, for example, relations between spicy and rough, blah, 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 yeah, that are very normal. Yeah? So this is what we see in all the music history, in film music, etc., etc., that there are groundings and, let's say, cooking recipes of making a sound, yeah, which is very close to us. But if we uh, work on uh, the relations and also... Uh, um, grounded on this uh, kind of observation of our uh, perception, we can also change the relations. Yeah? So it's not, um, I don't uh, think that um, music or uh, especially my music is there to make, uh, to make you perceive a spicy sound because it's very easy that you can perceive a spicy sound. But if I'm um, working on contextualizations of uh, where a spicy sound is maybe brought uh, to, um, let's say, I don't know, anyone, uh, any, uh, any other um, quality, then we might, by this uh, synthesis, we might come to sounds and to relations that are not uh, pre-described in our brain set, in our mindset, in our body, and so we can produce um, relations, sounds, and also semantics, or in German Bedeutungen, yeah, so this kind of uh, double meaning, um, that are new to us, that are um, maybe, uh, I always call it unlabeled. We don't, uh, we don't uh, know them still. Yeah? And this kind of uh, working on a synthesis uh, by, and producing, let's say, New is such a strange word, I don't like to use it, but let's call it uh, so, or unknown, yeah? Uh, acoustic perceptions, this is what I'm aiming for. So I would say the first thing that I am uh, try to work on a music that gives you a specific acoustic, musical, and then also entire body-based uh, and uh, experience, this is what I'm trying to, yeah? Uh, so this is and this is the goal that I, I want to go uh, and all the you know the composition techniques all the the uses of instruments or the um, working on the idiomatics of instruments is then based upon uh, this thought and uh, about this kind of um, let's say try to get to an experience that I would say is a unique experience when it's when it stays unlabeled thus you can hear it. Uh, Many times, yeah. A beautiful sonata is somehow on on uh, because it's so complex in its perception an unlabeled uh, experience. We never get the whole thing, yeah. Differently, maybe to let's say a film music, yeah, which is directly and very clearly labeled, which is also a quality to be able to do something like this, yeah, to make it uh, such a uh, such a labeling in. Um, uh, in the in the experience, yeah? but this is not what I think contemporary art and contemporary, especially music, is made for. Or sh yeah. Uh, so I'm curious. Uh, do you all probably talk with the audience who have heard it, and you get feedbacks? And um, do do people tell you that they have experienced this um, like new feeling and is not knowing, not being too able when, when they hear your music? Well, maybe um, sometimes not so directly. Sometimes I get the feedback that um, people without knowing, let's say, the thematic uh, path which a, a piece is going, but they suddenly react exactly in this way. Yeah? So they give me their body um, feelings, so the, uh, or let's say the acoustic transformation into their bodies, and it's absolutely more or less um, what I in what I was working on, uh, because I'm not intending to um, to give you a feeling, but I'm working on feelings that uh, and emotions, and also in German we have this wonderful word Empfindungen, which is very broad, yeah, which is more than a feeling, more than a sensation, uh, and more than an emotion. It's a it's a very complex uh, thing, um, and I'm working on these Empfindungen, so sensations, yeah? um, and 
what uh, what uh, someone then uh, is uh, telling me is his very reading of this working on so i never heard that he loves those spicy or sweet sounds yeah but that there was this kind of very strange um you know sometimes it's going to be recognized and then of course the recognition is over um lapped by something else and so um especially and this is very funny especially non musician uh, listeners yeah non profs yeah who are somehow open to to this kind of um you know uh non professional listening without all the techniques that uh, professionals in usually uh, have yeah that they are much more um let's say not open but they you know also their their language is more open yeah into a thinking like this yeah um so well i get these kind of feedbacks quite often yeah also from professionals and also from very good musician friends so that's uh, that's for sure yeah so what i'm getting is that you try to keep it ab abstract rather than tying it down to like a certain thing you're trying to like broaden the interpretation uh, as wide as possible yes uh, i think uh, you know uh, the this is a technical term um, trying to 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 keep it abstract is because when we are talking about these uh, sensations and sounds we are talking about very very specific ones yeah Uh, so if I'm going to a specific instrument and and I would uh, you know um, uh, go for uh, or you know as a, as a, and I put in my in my bag of materials maybe something which might be um, close to something spicy or acid like yeah then it's a very specific sound because it's in the instrumental setting something uh, that is uh, somehow. Um, Not, not nothing abstract yeah? but when i'm working yeah i try to keep it abstract because in the abstraction i can then um for example uh, make mixtures make synthesis of sound make you know also overlappings and uh, transitions between sounds that are so far away yeah but um which when when i would be on the on the very tight down thing yeah i would not be able to think this yeah And these are also things that um, when um, when you are working on this level, you are not able, or at least me, I'm not able to pre-hear this music. So when I'm composing, I'm not able to uh, pre-hear the music that I will compose. I have a, something like, you know, a dark cloud uh, or a very um, precisely defined cloud, uh, something like in the metaphor above my head. Huh? But it's not a music, I'm not working on the music that I can Pre-hear, so I'm not composing that I'm the music that I want to hear, but I'm composing the music that I'm not able to pre-hear. So I need to compose it. Yeah, very simple. You know, I'm uh, pragmatic also in this way. Uh, if I would um, compose a music that I can pre-hear, I would be bored in a way because okay, that's somehow it's existing. It's still it's in my head existing. Yeah, but when I'm composing and there is no way to pre-hear this music before it's not written down. Yeah? Yeah. Then the, the act of composing really makes sense for me. Yeah? And of course, this is also something, uh, this kind of gesture into an, into an uh, space where I don't know where, what is, um, you know, there is a border and when I start to work, there is something behind this border. Yeah? I have no idea what. Yeah? Of course, I have ideas what. Because you know, I'm I'm making a very clear uh, outline of the of the techniques of whatsoever. You know, I assume that there will be something, but in fact, there is a lot of in the process of writing. There are um, a, a lot of uh, let's say unknown countries that I will I have to get to learn. Yeah, I have to get used to. Sometimes, you know, even I have to um, learn to 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 like this. Or these uh, sounds or this kind of, of music that's coming out yeah that's not something that is clear that oh i love my music no uh, i have to learn to love my music in some pieces i still don't really love because they are strange for me but somehow they were necessary yeah and this is something that i think is um in this way of uh, of a music that is not producing an old picture or trying to produce an old reproduce an old picture of music but is working on 
uh, uh, let's say, not foreseeable music, what music still can be, that's the effort that we composers can make. Yeah. Because I have, you know, um, a, a really good film music composer, he goes uh, into this, I make this, and I make this, and I make this, and I make you cry here, and I make you laugh here, and etc., etc. Yeah. And this is, but this is, uh, this is not what I think the project of contemporary music is, uh, was invented for, and also the techniques, uh, the techniques are not um, worked out for, for uh, something like this. Uh, you mentioned that you don't pre-hear your composition when you're composing it. But um, would you say as soon as it comes on the paper, you know what you expect from the sound color? Or w will you get surprised when, when you're uh, like rehearsing it with the musicians? Of course, uh, what I meant with I can pre-hear it, I'm not, uh, you know... Um, uh, somehow there is the story of Mozart that he has all the symphony in his head and he just has to write it down. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> that this is uh, what I meant. Yeah, uh, of course I hear everything as exactly as uh, as possible, you know. And I try to also to have a um, have a very clear uh, inner perception of all the sounds when I'm writing it down. Yeah, but when I'm making, uh, when I'm composing, and when uh, also by technical means things come together. Yeah, this is not prehearable. Uh, for me, you know, in the in the in the process of music and also in the structure, yeah. Of course, I'm then also working on something that uh, we also have the German word Gestalt for this, yeah. And this is then, of course, very precise and also very preheerable. But what I then do to it, yeah, this is in the overall form and in the overall, you know, also gesture of the piece, not really preheerable. Of course, when I'm composing, um, I. Of course, there is, you know, there are some indeterminacies uh, that uh, might be not prehearable in any way, but I try my very, very best to prehear this. Yeah, um, I'm not. Uh, of course, then there is this kind of wonderful surprise because your inner ear is always a little different to what you hear then from a violin or from an ensemble or an orchestra. Yeah. But in fact, um, this is this is not what I mean with uh, so that I have no idea of what the score is. I have a quite precise. Yeah? But you know, uh, in the in the um, it, it's a more a constructive thing. Yeah, that I'm not running after the music that I have in my head, but that the music is exactly um, discovering itself in the process of working. Yeah. And um, and I have a lot of steps in um, in my uh, in making sketches, yeah. And it's like a, maybe you know this old uh, metaphor, like a photography that very slowly uh, gets his precise shape. Yeah. And at first you just see some. Uh, I have a ah, it's like this. Maybe you know some some shadows like this. And the more and more I work on it, the more and more precise this. Music as uh, um, as a as a picture uh, metaphor comes out, and at some point, oh, okay, this is the Gestalt, this is the face, this is the body of this music, you know, and it's not there before. I did not uh, decide any uh, of these small details yeah? in this uh, in this preciseness. Yeah? Of course, I know about the form, I know about a lot of things, and yeah, this is this is clear. Yeah, but this this is what I meant with pre-hearing yeah well discussing your uh, compositional style how did your style develop to this stage um, how did you start and what changes did you go through yeah at first um, style is for me a term which I really try as hard as I can <clears throat> to avoid yeah style is nothing that is interesting for me style is something if I have a style or if I'm aiming let's let's call it like this if I'm aiming for a style I'm aiming for a reproduction for my of myself yeah? and this is what I'm totally try to avoid I try to uh, make it any piece something which is a new land for me at least yeah of course something is totally clear I cannot rip my skin off yeah I cannot uh, leave my body that's just very simple so there might be something uh, which uh, which is then called style, some inscription in all the pieces, um, which 
I'm just doing because these are my hands, this is my body, this is my way uh, of talking, this is my way of perceiving the world, etc., etc. Yeah? But style, in the sense of um, um, uh, of the word, I would really try to neglect as hard as possible. Well, let's say philosophy, like your the, the philosophy that you've reached. Like, how did you develop that? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, I... I think it was it, it it's a process, and uh, when I remember myself, there were pieces done, let's say, in the beginning of the nineties of the last century, so about nineteen ninety two, yeah, where questions arise in my music, uh, which I could not really. Um, precisely answer or work on but there were questions there yeah there were the questions of the um, groundings of making sound of the groundings of perception also of remembrance history yeah and these pieces from the from the early and uh, myth of the 19th were uh, like you know like um, um, how to say like uh, Steinbruch what is Steinbruch um, I don't uh, get the word. You know, all it's just uh, these were the rough stones in the landscape. Yeah, but I, I, uh, and at, from this time on, um, of course, these were main interests, and this is more or less then developed to what I said before. Yeah, um, about about my philosophy, and then simply, you know, working, and this was a big, um, this was a was a big thing for me that I was able to work on project not pro not producing pieces but i could really um bring myself to making projects yeah that every project uh, that um, developed a question towards what can music be under these certain uh circumstances yeah? and by asking myself these questions with any piece you know for any and that any piece <clears throat> i'm I have the feeling that I'm starting composing from the very beginning on, you know. There is no backpack that I have and I just put it and, ah, there is a there is a cup. I put the cup here and I can drink from the cup, but I have to find everything new. And I think that this, this the, the, also this gesture and this searching yeah, is something that was there from the beginning on, yeah? because um, this that seemed to be for me just one of the big necessities of, of art that when I'm making art, I should not know what I'm, uh, that what art is. Yeah? If I have a definition of art, somehow I always felt it boring. I felt it, yeah, felt it too satirized, too, yeah, too, uh, too fat, to being fat in the fauteuil and turning on the TV. Yeah? And so still now I don't want to know what music is. Yeah. And this keeps me on going, uh, composing, that keeps keeps me on listening to music, that keeps me reading, uh, watching films, going into museums, uh, talking to people. Because, in fact, I, with any question, I have no idea what we are, what uh, music is. Of course, you know, the experience gets bigger. Uh, also, the, the what is fantastic in what I felt, for me, fantastic, you know, that my... Um, perception system, the antennas, you know, the, the big, uh, they, they get very, very um, differentiated. Of course, also, I look at my world through my glasses, yeah, and it's, it gets always harder and harder to put on different glasses on the world, you know. This is what I love in teaching because then I see uh, the different glasses that young composers have, yeah, and I can also change a little bit my glasses by, you know, um, getting into their world. Um, and this is maybe something how it, how it developed over the years, you know. Um, and the thing that I feel is that by, by doing this, I will never stop composing and I will never get, compo uh, get bored. I will never produce music, but I will always be in a search um, um, for... Um, or something that might be some, you know, that that's on the very relation between me or us humans and the world, uh, and that there is no restriction and there are no border borders between. 
this kind of world and us because we are the world, you know. And this is a very, and, and it always keeps me going. Huh? Because the questions never stop. I understand. Um, you mentioned teaching. What I was curious about was that um, you are probably on a jury which decides, like if students get into the university. So when you see the score of a student, what do you have to see in that score, like from your view, to think, okay, this person has something interesting and I want to know more? I don't know. It's, you know, that's one of the most problematic um, things in teaching when you have to decide to work with somebody or not. Somehow it's, you know, of course, uh, um, it depends on how old somebody is, but somehow I should get the feeling that the person who wants to compose um, is not, uh, what is zufrieden? Um, I'm just getting to satisfied. satisfied, yeah. Uh, neither with what he heard, uh, he hears in music, neither with his music or her music. Yeah. So and that there, there is all this kind, uh, always this kind of. Um, I'm not. I, I don't know where to go, but I need to go. Yeah. And so I'm studying because I don't need a. a, a nobody should uh, tell me the path where to go, but maybe I get some, you know, some landmarks where I could go or, um, you know, I'm, I'm because this, and I think this kind of disorientation yeah, is fantastic. It's, it's um, you know, we all get frightened, of course, about this uh, disorientation. And I know when I, were, when I were, did study and also afterwards, this kind of all being overwhelmed by, by not knowing yeah, and by, by having no clear idea was also frightening sometimes but at least this is for me the the huge creative aspect when we have this kind of not knowing but need need to go you know this kind of paradoxy yeah and that's where we make uh, experiences and if somebody if i get the feeling and of course i can make mistakes as well but um that's uh, human when i get the feeling that somebody tries to force him to experiences that are always new to him, then I'm getting interested. Yeah? And, but don't tell me how this works in the score because, you know, what we read in the score, you know, we, we are reading uh, with, uh, between the lines. Yeah? We are, I'm seeing, I'm talking to, to the young composers. Um, we are, and then somehow, you know, that somehow you have to make a decision. Yeah? And somehow... I had a bad feeling and it turned out to be fantastic. Sometimes I had a good feeling and it turned out to be okay. Yeah? Sometimes it's just that someone says, I want to study with you and nobody else. And I say, okay, let's try. Yeah? And it's gonna, it turned out fantastic. But still now I have to say with all the students, I was totally happy. Yeah? Everybody of them made his or her own way. Yeah. Uh, not depending if they still compose or whatever, but got uh, somehow complete either artistic persons or, or, or let's say uh, artists or doing something else, but being then somehow with both feet in the world and doing just their thing, which is uh, something, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic thing if you can help somebody a little bit in this kind of, uh, of path through, through a life. And um, how do you teach, how do you choose your material? Like, what do you give them for source of inspiration? Is this necessarily music or literature or other art forms? No, it's not necessarily music. It's a reaction. You know, somebody comes with a piece or with a project and then I'm just reacting with my um, system of thinking and, of, of course, also with my knowledge. Um, and I think this is something because I'm there as a kind of... A, um, uh, you know, 
they have to their system is rubbing on my system yeah and of course uh, I'm just there to ask questions uh, and then of course maybe get, get giving hints and uh, do you know this do you know that blah 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 and this uh, and uh, this happens there and there and there. the technical aspects are, there, are like this you know uh, this is clear but somehow I think teaching is something that you confront your system with a different system yeah and that uh, by this kind of uh, uh, how do you call it? It's it's a um, it's a kind of a scratch. Or then, yeah, there is energy might be free, uh, might be freed for and also for me, and that's the wonderful aspect. But for the students, and of course also for me. So, um, and this is and I'm teaching in 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 a way of like uh, reacting on the um, uh, on the uh, on the students' work in my way of thinking. Of course, I try to understand is a whole way of thinking as good as possible but then of course you know my personality my way of thinking is then also something uh, which is then for them the the, the uh, source of inspiration yeah not inspiration but uh, that's 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 the wave breaker you know and yeah. when a wave comes and it breaks then something or maybe m might be also ruined but maybe some free energy and some new energy is arising yeah and also I'm kind of a mirror you know because uh, when I'm um, when I'm reacting on their work, I might be this kind of a mirror that uh, shows them the picture of their work under my, let's say, uh, conditions. Yeah. So I'm not a true mirror. I'm not the, the 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 objective mirror, but I am the mirror in my way of thinking. Yeah. And that's also then makes sense to go to some somebody else. Yeah. And uh, trying out this mirror. Yeah. Like students also show the pieces to themselves, so to other students, and they also always function as kind of mirrors um, where you see yourself out of different angles. And that's, I think, very helpful and very necessary. Okay. Um, thank you. And uh, coming back a little bit to your compositions, um, I think it's interesting to discuss one of your pieces. Well, I have to, I had to go uh, through your works a little bit and was absolutely fascinated by the um, studies for a portrait for electric guitar. Could you explain how you, how you wrote it and like, how did you work with the musician? Yeah. Um, so the studies for electric guitar, I was somehow, I came to writing for guitar in the mid of the 1990s. Yeah. By, uh, and still then, I never stopped writing for guitar. So there is a, there is a quite big complex of um, works with guitar and also for solo pieces. And for, for, the, uh, elect, uh, for the studies for electric guitar, um, I, you know, I was thinking, so my first uh, thought was there is a guitar player. He has two hands. And with the electric guitar, we also have the feet for uh, all, uh, you know, the pedals, etc. And um, how to to recreate this um, instrument in terms that every one, uh, every one of uh, our hands and uh, arms and also feet has, an, let's say, polyphonic impact on the sound. And um, so the the Uh, the new definition of the guitar is was very simple. The right hand does what always the right hand does. I just uh, and that's also due to elect uh, to the electricity. <clears throat> you can uh, you do not need any plugging because uh, tapping is as good as plugging. Yeah, because uh, so I can um, the hand moves over the fingerboard in very. Structures. I can. Uh, we can also talk about then <clears throat> about the structures. The left hand, but then it's differently, you know, because on the left hand we have uh, a bottleneck, which is a movable um, thread. Yeah. So uh, there is no plugging or merely any plugging, but I use the the bottleneck, and the bottleneck moves on the right on the right hand side. And sometimes clicks also, yeah. And so the whole uh, harmonic system of the fret in the left hand side is then questioned by a glissando um, working of the bottleneck, yeah. And so 
uh, we have two different uh, systems. Yeah? One is a floating on the right hand and one is a precise chromatic one of the left hand, which are then, trans uh, which are then synthesized uh, into each other. Yeah? And uh, the two feet, yeah, we have always uh, then uh, also, um, let's say, one which is more fixed and one uh, which is more uh, movable in uh, working uh, with the pedals. Yeah? And there are various pedals which are also then transforming, for example, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, pitch shifting, what the left and the right hand uh, do, does. Yeah? So we have a very complex um, system of four, uh, let's say, systems, which are then um, transforming each other, but in various ways. Yeah? So it's not always the same transformation and the same synthesis which is going for, which I'm aiming for. Yeah? And the material um, of the right hand, because it's an electric guitar, I'm very much uh, concerned in this about all the harmonic system of pop, rock and jazz uh, guitar playing. So all what you play on the left hand is, at, uh, is in one term um, built out of the chords which are coming out of the, you know, just simply possibilities of fingering of the guitar history. Yeah. So it's not abstract thinking on, uh, of, on pitches, but it's uh, like uh, fingering objects yeah, that I'm getting out of this history. And then, of course, they are transformed by the bottleneck of the right-hand side. The left-hand side, uh, then by uh, tapping, produces uh, the or, or brings the uh, string to vibrate. And when the bottleneck is uh, hitting the strings, it's also, of course, making it uh, vibrate. So I have two versions of vibrations, yeah, and uh, it's all kind of tapping, stronger or what, uh, whatsoever. And in this kind of system, I am um, starting a big game of, let's call it, and this is the portrait thing of uh, possibilities of, uh, let's say, let's call it, what I was talking before about human empfindungen, uh, uh, sensations, yeah? and then I, re I rely a little bit on um, some uh, things that are interesting for me because I need to uh, uh, somehow to, to, to organize the material uh, and also the thematic thread. Yeah? And so, and, and then the big, the the whole uh, from the formal side, uh, it's it studies in in plural. So because it was uh, for a Don, Don Darmstadt um, new music course for the um, electric guitar course, uh, they um, Jaron Deutsch asked for small etudes for his uh, students, and then I was uh, I decided to write four etudes for small etudes, yeah, and then I uh, inserted three. Uh, transitions from one etude to the other and then that made the piece so it's a kind of an etude book with uh, some tradition uh, transitions in between that then made this kind of uh, the form of the piece are you a guitar player yourself did you have the possibility to experiment on it yourself well when i was very young i learned the guitar for myself yeah but on a on a not very high level and not classic guitar so I, and I have a guitar, and I of course tried everything or I tried most of the things out, but also a lot of things when I made my uh, made my studies with um, also with uh, Jaron and some other guitar players, just also to know or, or also the electric uh, the electric part of this. You know how does the guitar react? What kind of um, uh, pedals are useful and what is possible for this kind of it's it's still it's not a guitar but it's a six strings with a bottleneck and fingers and a fret and uh, and devices yeah it's uh, the the word guitar is a little strange in in this aspect then and of course i tried this out and then by composing there was also this kind of um knowledge this will be possible yeah but then by this kind of polyphonic uh, layout that um, not just this piece but all my music more or less has, you know, there was uh, there were uh, really uh, there were 
many moments that also again I could not foresee and for here and that are also were also very very hard to exactly know where when the bottleneck is moving uh, towards the uh, towards the um, fingerboard and you have a scale uh, at, uh, in the left hand at the same time what is the exact sound when at the same time the uh, the transition uh, pedal does this or that you know that was somehow quite hard to it, it was more it was even sometimes harder than to organize an orchestra piece um, because you know uh, what happens inside the the instrument was quite hard and But it took a long time to write this and also to foresee this. And then I was absolutely um, somehow also overwhelmed that when they played it and also then Jaron Deutsch played it for uh, for his recording, it was just like amazed, you know, how fantastic these sounds can be embodied in a musician's uh, interpretation and also within the uh, within the sound of the instrument. Yeah, um, so. It was, yeah, and it sounds like I, I tried to imagine it, yeah, and sometimes, and this is very uh, nice for me, sometimes even better than I was uh, thinking, or more, more, um, how to say, more interesting, more, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, even more strange sometimes, yeah. Yes, it's quite clear that the musician is very open and explorative, and, and you can clearly hear that. What I'm also curious about is that did you have to invent a lot of your own notations for the things that you wanted? Um, sometimes, yes. Um, uh, of course, you know, especially for the guitar piece, there are some kinds of notations which are not totally in, uh, invented by me because, you know, uh, still uh, since the, the 70s, we have a, a big Uh, you know, not notation uh, experience in, in, in various things. So I'm combining different uh, notations. Um, in terms of notation, I try to be as uninventive as possible. So I'm trying to rely as much as I as, as is possible on notations which musicians are more and more um, familiar with yeah so it makes no sense to make a at least for me to to invent a totally different uh, new notation because uh, then for the musicians it's um, even harder to learn the piece because they have to first learn the notation before they learn the piece yeah so what uh, all the, the, the you know the of what Lachmann, Sparlinger and all these uh, and also Hübler etc try to invent With their notation, out of a specific system, I try to um, try to bring into my music because they, I assume it's more or less known. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think it's also interesting for many fellow composers to know if you have to come up with a new notations. Is there a better way to do it? Like, do you have some rules for it, or or? Uh, the the big problem with notation is that a notation that you choose or that you rely on limits your what you can organize. You know, uh, so our five line system is a limitation of what we are uh, able to organize in sound, yeah? and also the bars and also the rhythmic uh, organization. Yeah? This is a this is what we have to know that um, um, notation is a limitation of our uh, aesthetic uh, possibilities. Yeah? And so if you choose a notation, you can organize a specific uh, part of the qualities of the sound, which uh, and then others you are not able to organize. Yeah? And so, um, you know, uh, I'm in this uh, respect quite uh, practical with notation because I do not think in annotation, but I think in what do I want to organize, and then I will find an uh, annotation. Yeah, and if you look at the scores, it's um, very often a mixture, a wild somehow also quite wild mixture, but which is in in the meantime totally normal. Yeah, of organize, uh, of of notation types. Yeah, of five line notation with pitches and normal um, uh, rhythms with additionals, with uh, not really graphic, but um, a, as for uh, the guitar piece, 
one stuff which uh, is, is uh, just shows you where you are on the on the on the board of the of the guitar yeah um then also notations which are quality notations i'm um, sometimes i'm giving uh, musicians hints by using words adjectives yeah so because when uh, when you when you or, uh, when you uh, fix a sound and also maybe you know when you fix for for example for for a string instrument the pressure and the velocity of the bow yeah it's still not clear what the sound is like yeah but if i add a word it might give then the musician the clear um uh, how to say the idea ah that's a, let's say a very fluid <laughs> Uh, vivid sound yeah like this yeah or it's a, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a compressed sound yeah of course musicians then forget these kind of words yeah so I'm uh, I try to be simply as communicative as possible yeah? uh, out of my brain yeah uh, and uh, what I often hear is that in the beginning of the work with musicians, they say, oh, you, you're writing so many things and it's so hard to read. And with the process, they say, okay, but I need everything, or I need every of those uh, informations to get to your way of sound. Yeah? If I wouldn't have this, I would, it would be a different sound. And that's uh, what I would say is, uh, the, is the goal of notations, to be as precise as possible not precise, but also not, uh, you know, uh, you need to, to give a very, very certain idea of the sound to a musician. Yeah. And this is what, what the notation should, 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 uh, should um, go aim for. And it's important to show that you know what you expect. Musicians, <laughs> musicians need to get the feeling that there is a very clear that I know what I want to hear. Yeah? Even when we are experimenting, and even better like this or better like this, you know, but there is this clear picture. Now, it's this sound, yeah? and of course, this sound always has an, an interpretation range, yeah? which is, uh, that's, that's clear. Yeah? But this is, this is absolutely clear because we are composing specific, let's say, sounds, taste of sounds, construction of sounds, and so we need to know no, that's a that's a wrong sound, yeah, and that's something that um, yeah, and that's that's transported to the musicians via the um, uh, notation. Well, as a successful composer whose work is uh, regularly performed by acclaimed ensembles and musicians, do you have any tips for struggling composers? Not necessarily musical tips, but maybe notes on establishing contacts with people, how to know which competitions or workshops are right for you well you know at first um something which is uh, one of the most beautiful things in this world is that uh there are people young musicians composers who compose by knowing that it's just for them because you don't get famous you don't get rich you do you will not be uh, acclaimed by a lot of people yeah? that's fantastic the second thing is um we all are bound into our constraints of life, so we have uh, simply to say to, to someone earn money, etc., uh, etc. Et and what composers, young composers, should know at some point is that how you make your living is directly um, of an uh, impact into your aesthetics. So if I want to live from composing, to say uh, very simply, I have to know that this is... Uh, um, uh, infecting my aesthetics just to say if for example if you can make and i'm very uh, cruel now if you can make uh, let's say two or three thousand uh, euros for a piece yeah and you need let's say twenty thousand a year then you know how many pieces you have to write so it's nine pieces a year and so every uh, one and a half month you have to write a piece and then I ask you, when do you have time to think about music, to uh, experiment, to create something, to, to be uncertain, to uh, throw a piece away, etc., etc.? Yeah? If composers like, um, for example, Wolfgang Riem, they just write, 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 this is their aesthetics, then it's okay. Yeah? 
But for, for example, for me, it would have been absolutely un. Um, it, it, it was totally clear for me that this is not my way of living, yeah? and that I do not want to write pieces in this way. Yeah? So, uh, um, and this is something that somebody that we all have to know yeah? that this is an, a direct impact. Yeah? And then, of course, you know, pa, uh, it's so hard. You know, if you want to make art, we are talking about art, and if you have a project. You should find, as a composer, a way to make your project. Yeah? Of course, uh, then there is a competition. Oh, great. Should I write now an orchestra piece for this competition? Because maybe if I'm getting um, awarded, uh, maybe then I have better uh, possibilities. This is, this is so hard to say because everybody is different, you know? I never won a com well. I won maybe one competition or two competitions because my projects were not made for competitions. They were too big, too long, too too, too strange uh, instrumentations, too what whatever you know. I never went to Darmstadt because I made my own experiences with my fellow composers, with playing music, uh, with um, you know. Um, so I, I, it was, and of course, it was a different time uh, in, in in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Um, I just say, would say, if we see music as art, we should define this art as this is my thing. Yeah? If there is an opportunity uh, that I have, I would go for it. Yeah? And even when I say, okay, I am totally in interested in an orchestra piece and there is a competition for orchestra maybe I'm writing an orchestra piece but I write it for myself and then I put it into the uh, into the uh, into the competition yeah this is one thing uh, that that's maybe possible so no no clear answer because everybody's different but when you make art please s see it as art yeah as something that is very very intimate for you and then Maybe one more thing is experience, 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 experience. You know, making experiences, not just music, uh, musical experiences, artistic experiences, human experiences, um, um, and uh, never believe yourself, never believe somebody else. <laughs> Always ask one more question uh, when you think that. You don't have to ask any question. And even ask one more question and go further than you think you might be able to go. Yeah? Then the world gets... As it, so, so then I'm getting curious, then I'm getting excited, then I'm getting um, interested. So this is, you know... And... Yeah. Uh, uh, and never be satisfied. But that's clear, I think, uh, when you start to compose and you're satisfied, because you have to be unsatisfied by music, otherwise you wouldn't compose. Even by the greatest music of the world, you are unsatisfied by this, because otherwise you would not say, okay, I want to do something else. Yeah? But, yeah, maybe these are... <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And somehow believe, don't believe yourself, but be, uh, trust in yourself somehow. Yeah. By not believing in yourself. All uh, paradoxes, you know. And yeah, and something, uh, love the paradox, because in arts you don't have to resolve a uh, paradox, but you can, you can leave the paradox open. Yeah? Because the paradox then always gives you an, uh, uh, an, an energy. Yeah? You don't have to... Uh, yeah, solve this uh, paradox, and this is something. Also, in in terms of um, let's say business, yeah, uh, where you can leave some paradoxes open. Clemens, thank you very much. It was such an interesting conversation. <laughs> thank you for the possibility, and um, best luck for your art and for the blog and for everything else. <laughs>